Nick Wright, co-host First Things First. Look at that, Kansas City at two. Despite a oh, di- shocker, a bus- ten straight weeks they just can't get to number one. I mean, just ten straight weeks you just snub them. Go ahead, sorry, I'll let you finish your show. My but, apologies. Go ahead. But let's be honest. If you privately asked Andy Reid who you don't want to face in this entire league, he'd take Philadelphia on. He'd take the Jags on. He'd take the Ravens. You would have to admit, Cincinnati's getting to scary Cincinnati again. They're really good. Sure. Yeah, no, I'm with that, but let's play that game the other way. If let's just say it's the AFC championship game, Colin, and the NFC championship game's already happened, and the Eagles or the Niners or the Cowboys or the Lions or whomever is sitting knowing they are in the Super Bowl, and that, NFC cha- that AFC championship game is Chiefs-Ravens. Who's that NFC team rooting for? Just curious. Who privately, who do they like, ah, we do want to face and we don't want to face. And we all know the answer is the team no one wants to face is Kansas City. And I want to ask you one other question. Just okay. a thought exercise, Colin, because you are, you know, one of the two most logical people in sports media. I can't think of who the other one is, but uh, it'll come to mind at some point. Here's my question. Yeah. Take all of NFL history. Yeah. And take your favorite of the all-time great quarterbacks. Yeah. Of which we agree Mahomes is one of them, right? Yeah. Put them in the prime of their career. Give them a universally accepted, excellent coach. And say, and you know what, this year, you get a top three defense. Prime Peyton Manning, you get a top three defense. Prime Tom Brady, you get a top three defense. Prime Aaron Rodgers, prime Dan Marino. Would that team in every year of NFL history be the favorite? You have a generational quarterback, a great coach, and right. top three evens. Would that but, team always be the favorite? But yeah. teams grow, and Kansas City should yeah. be the favorite in January. But that receiving core in the second half, where Kansas City with a 21 nothing lead, you're probably going to your app and saying 48-7, but you don't now. I think in six to eight weeks, the receiving core will be better than today, but they've downgraded at left tackle. This receiving core doesn't have a one or a two. They're not the best team today. Oh, Colin, hold on. This, here's the problem. Everyone wants Kansas City to look the way they want them to look. Let me ask you a question, Colin. Okay, okay. Are you the best broadcaster yes. <laughs> right now? Well, Come on. well, no, I don't I'm mean not, in the world. I do Are fine. you the best broadcaster what? you've been? Yes. You've been. Uh, Are you the best broadcaster yes. that you've been in your career? Uh, probably close to it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. On most probably days. Probably close to it. Are yeah, you yeah. the same? Do you do you have do you, no. if you look listen back to your tape from 20 years ago no. are there takes that were hotter that you maybe <laughs> would be like ah I'm not going to say that yeah. it's not quite as exciting but you're better this Chiefs team is just different they the, the idea that and this is what I don't know why people are afraid to admit this can this Chiefs team still win a shootout? I believe they can. Does it happen as often? No, but they can. But for the first time in Mahomes' career, they can win a game like Sunday. Yeah. They can win a defensive game because they shut down an opposing great offense. So I'm going to be the last one that just go, goes ahead and says, the team that won the Super Bowl, that has the best record, that has the best coach, the best quarterback, and all of a sudden a great defense, that, by the way, has the exact exact same receiving core it had last year, except they lost Juju and added Rasheed Rice, who I think at this point is better than Juju. I think that team is the overwhelming favorite. We'll see how long it takes everyone to agree with me. You'll be the first, Colin. As the second most logical person in sports media, you'll be the first to admit everyone else will get there eventually. All right, let's go to this. So I try to be Colin glass full with Jason 10 minutes ago. I said the Jets go into a draft and do not have to draft anybody on one side of the ball defense. They don't. They even have good corners, two of them. Um, Special teams, whatever. I said they need a left tackle and more receivers and tight ends. And those positions, especially receiver, tight end, college football furnishes you with lots of those players. But But their GM missed on a left tackle and a quarterback. And do you think the Jets will regret not bringing in a Kirk Cousins, a Carson Wentz, when Aaron Rodgers got hurt? Well, well, yeah, or, I mean, how we've had two quarterbacks pop their Achilles this year, unfortunately. One of them, days later, brought in Josh Dobbs. The other put their fingers in their ears and pretended everything would be okay. 
And I don't know, Colin, if it's pride or ego, but for some reason, the Jets refusing to admit that they butchered, and you know what? I want to be fair here. I don't even think they butchered the Zach Wilson pick. If you look back at that draft, we now know there was one great quarterback and he went the pick before him. They had to draft a quarterback there. Who were the options? Zach, doesn't work. Trey Lance, can't get on the field. Justin Fields, probably the highest upside, but probably not the guy. And Mac Jones, who's going to get benched after this season. So you could simply say, we had to take a quarterback. Turns out there weren't any. We've got to admit that. Instead, they refused to admit it in the offseason. They had too much pride that, you know, or ego that no chance Aaron gets hurt so we can have Zach and Tim Boyle as the backups. And then when he did get hurt, they pretended everything would be fine. And Colin, if there was ever a moment of clarity for them, it should have been after last week. Last week when they got the single worst win in maybe NFL history in that game against the Giants, yeah. when some, they, they could have had a second where they said, you know what, we're four and three. Don't know how, but we are. Aaron keeps making noise like he's going to come back. Yeah. Can we go, so you know, pay a slight premium for Jacoby Brissett, for Davis Mills, who's not going to get on the field in Houston, because just as a bridge. Because one thing Robert Sala said correctly last night, Colin, is that that was not even close to Zach Wilson's worst game of his career. And that's the problem. That was actually a slightly above average Zach Wilson game, and they couldn't move the football, they couldn't score. So I don't know why they, they went about it this way, but now this is they're just simply repeating the exact season they had last year. A great defense and an offense that's so bad you can't win. So um, I, I hear a lot about, um, you know, the Cowboys should be encouraged about their loss to Philadelphia. And it was one of those rare games where I kind of said, this is what's going to happen, and it did. I said it'll be close. Dallas will go toe-to-toe, -to -toe, but situationally, they'll do what they do. They're bad situationally. Philly's good, and that really was the game. How should they, in your opinion, feel this morning, the Dallas Cowboys? Oh, I actually, on this one, I actually disagree with you because I was Philly great situationally? Maybe. I mean, Philly was the team that butchered, you know, either a handoff or ran into each other in almost a run-out-the-clock situation late in the game that could have set the Cowboys up to steal it. Philly is a team right now that I give them massive credit for being 8-1 and one and Jalen playing through injury and their aggressiveness on fourth downs. I think they are a very impressive team. I also think we now have seen all year and parts of last year, if you can block them, you can move the ball on them through the air. Yes. That they, if, if you can block them, that secondary can be had. And if I'm Dallas, I look at it in this regard. I think Dallas, ha if they're honest, they are probably looking at the potential postseason and saying, boy, oh boy, I hope someone else beats San Francisco because we do not seem able to do it. Like San Francisco, for some reason, we can't beat them. We match up poorly with them. I think Dallas looks at Philly and says, we absolutely can beat them. That we, the, yes, if Philly won that game, I would expect Dallas to win the game in their building in a month and a half or when, you know, the beginning of December when that game is. I think Philly deserves to be the favorites, but I also think Dallas, because they have a, not an elite offensive line, but a strong enough offensive line to give Dak time, I think Dallas vertically can move the ball on them and potentially win a shootout next time 31-28 instead of losing 28-23. So while I don't think Dallas can necessarily beat San Francisco, I do think they match up relatively well with the Eagles. So I was saying yesterday on Sean McDermott, uh, it may be time to pivot. I said if you have two, let's say you have two kids, son and a daughter. Okay. One is detailed and organized. One is a visionary. So the son is like an accountant, detail and organized, but doesn't have a lot of vision. The I daughter, like daughter, I'm already in. Let's daughter's go. a little scatterbrained, yeah. but unbelievable creativity and vision. Often I've got kids, they're not the same. So the coach that can organize and clean up messes, I grew up with Chuck Knox, Rams, uh, Marty Schottenheimer, over and over, sure. go into a mess, organize it, clean it up. Not a lot of vision to the next level. I think that's McDermott. There's a rigidity around him and a lack of vision. He did a remarkable job, like a Chuck Knox or a Schottenheimer, to clean a mess up. They have yeah. clearly hit. Nobody fears them now. Cincinnati, Jags, nobody Correct. fears them. 
your thoughts on Buffalo. I think I think sometimes I, you have to look in the mirror and go, our organizing guy is not our vision guy. We mean we may need to pivot well, here. If I may, I'll give you an example coach-wise from the NBA, contemporary one, what Tom Thibodeau. Tom Thibodeau is a almost perfect coach to hire if it's a mess and you need a serious playoff caliber organization, but has shown consistently that once you get that, you need someone else to take you to the next step. It's probably not him. So I think you might be right on Sean McDermott. I also think the majority of the blame probably should go to the front office and the coaching staff because you tweeted this, Colin, a couple weeks ago, and I think it's spot on. It was something to the effect of that maybe everyone has just overrated the Bills' talent. You know what, Colin? They are a team with a very high floor or high ceiling, low floor quarterback with one great offensive player, Stephon Diggs. The quarterback, they got a very good quarterback and a great receiver. What else on this team offensively do we love? I know defensively they've suffered a ton of injuries, but that's not why four of the last six weeks they've had ten, four of the last five weeks, pardon me, they've had ten points or fewer at the midway mark of the fourth quarter. Their offensive struggles are what's more notable than the defense not being great because of the injuries. I, they have missed on a ton of draft picks. They have a fine offensive line, but not a great one. They don't trust their run game. They don't have a second receiver. And Josh is so hit or miss. He's great when he's great, but you don't know when that's coming. I just don't think it's a great roster. So you take the fact that maybe the coach kind of reached his Peter principle. Josh Allen is still always constantly trying to recreate that playoff game against the Chiefs, even when games don't call for it. And aside from Diggs, who scares you, you know, all of a sudden, a lot of teams can pass you in the AFC. The Chiefs were always ahead of them. The Bengals clearly passed them last year, if not the year before. The Jags are right there. The Ravens are right there. You're, and obviously, Miami is right there in a different kind of their different style of team. You can wake up and all of a sudden find out we thought we were competing with the Chiefs for the top of the conference. Turns out we're competing with the Steelers for the final playoff spot. Yeah. And I think that's the situation Buffalo has found themselves in. Once again, Dapper, uh, very well appointed. Oh, uh, Nick so Wright, kind. first things first. A show is on I, fire. I appreciate that. On fire, my man. I, can, can I, before, I know, I know we're out of time, just real quick. Yeah. Is Herbert going to make the playoffs? I just need to know. Are the Chargers going to make if, the playoffs? Are if they, they get, beat get Detroit this weekend, which is, by oh. the way, if they beat Detroit, they're a playoff. Look at their schedule. It's a lot of Denver. It's a lot of average quarterbacks. They do face Lamar. Yep. That's an L. If they beat Detroit... They're a playoff team. Well, and they get Kansas City in week 18 when the Chiefs will probably be resting everyone. One <laughs> seed locked up, got our feet up on the couch, and they can sneak in that way. Let's talk to you later. See you, Colin.